exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing show, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Strike King's Hook and Look with Kim Stricker. Over the past few decades, numerous advancements have occurred within the fishing realm. Boats, engines, electronics, even soft plastic lure design. The realistic texture and versatility of today's soft plastic baits has enabled them to be used in many configurations, rigs, and with a variety of presentations. Their significance isn't just in how they look or how they feel or taste. It's how well they work. For its functionality, the quality of being suited to serve a purpose well, which makes one soft plastic lure design more effective than another. Assuredly, the diversity of today's soft plastics takes on many innovative forms, equally as innovative as the names they're given. Space monkey. <laughs> Good call on flipping this deep mill full. As the sun breaks o'er the earth, to say that night is gone, awake and peer at wonder bright, so beautiful is the dawn. A gentle flow across the land will change the dim to bright, as silhouettes cast from things above, glistening in the light. Come feel the warm-hearted spirit as birds begin to sing, the sound of all that's stirring, nature in harmony rings. So from the deepest sleep at night, awake one early morn, and join us in this precious time, for when a day is born. These are reflective words composed from an imaginative mind. The author just happens to be Kim's guest on today's program, Steve Parks. This tall, talented Texan possesses quite an inventive intellect. Steve is more well known as the creator of Strike King's Rage Tail patented lure designs, and he and Kim have set out to confirm their functionality. Well, let's go have some fun, Kim Stricker. I intend to. So how did you come up with the Rage Tail? Well, back in the, it was late 80s, early 90s, I was guiding at night on Fork down in Texas. And it was a, we had some awesome buzz bait nights on the lake and, and a lot of the clients, you know, they were throwing up in the, up in the grass and, and their buzz bait would get all trashed up before it, you know, it didn't have to go too far and it got trashed up. And that's when I decided, I think I need to make a soft plastic wheelet, totally wheelless, that'll run across the, all, across the top of that stuff, that'll come through all of it and never foul up. Mm -hmm. But make the same noise as a buzz bait and have the same water movement. So, so I designed the Raid Shad. That was, that was kind of the first of the group. Mm -hmm. And then, after that, I needed, I needed a crawl, so I did the crawl and the anaconda, all the different baits in the toad. So it all started right there. And the space monkey. And the space monkey. That was the next generation. There we go. Yeah. Start us out there, big O. Any get her size? started? I can't tell. Well, I'll get the net just in case. No, he's pretty small. Yeah, to you. <laughs> that's, that's not a small fish. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, To, to a, a guy that fishes falcon all the time, yeah, that might be smaller, <laughs> but up here. There you go. There you go. Pretty color on him, too. He looks like he talked like this. I think he's been hooked before. He's been caught up yeah, just a few times before. He's been before. caught a few times before. 
we're good. Let's start us out. All right, that'll play with it. What all did he tear off? Nothing. My monkey is still good. You should put me back out there, Daddy. I'll get him. Even at 62. Mm-hmm. My monkey is still good. There's one of them. That's a better fish. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> right where he's supposed to be. Ooh, yes, sir. Good job. Yeah. Kim. That's more like it. That's a space monkey fish. He'd jump Good out job, of the water. friend. Look how solid and healthy that fish is. Yeah. That's the way you're supposed to do it. That's it. That old space monkey. All right. Not bad. But Look, he's bleeding on his tail. Look here. Look. He's yeah, bleeding that, right down that's, his tail. that's from spawning. That's still good. Yeah. All right. Good job. When we return, Kim and Steve present their monkeys vertically. Say what? Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Vicious Fishing Line, get vicious. And by Boat US Angler. Welcome back. Kim is fishing with Rage Tail designer Steve Parks, and the two are demonstrating the versatility of Strike King's Rage Space Monkey. You know why they call him Space Monkey? Those two ridges that go down his back, they, they look like tanks, twin tanks on his back. When all the guys up at Strike King looked at that bait when they first saw it, now that looks like something from outer space. <laughs> they said, let's call him a space monkey. Big old thick clumps like that. Uh huh. Drop it right on top of them. This is the best way to fish this mill foil, too, is to flip it or to pitch to it. Get the vertical presentation in it, you know? It's hard to be hard dragging through it otherwise. That's a good one. That's a big bait. fish. That's a big one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you drop it on their head, man. Drop I'm telling you. You got uh, up on your toes on that one. I'd say that was the right call. Pitching in those patches of milfoil. Great call. <sighs> the old space monkey. Space monkey. <laughs> Good, Good job. Deal. Nice thick patch of milfoil right here. Nine foot of water. Got him? Yeah. Good one? Yeah, here's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck in the net down here. Oh, that's a good one. Definitely. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, from Texas, they grow them big. <laughs> but we ain't in Texas. But the Texas boys can catch them. Oh, man. Way to go. Oh. Excellent job. Good call on flipping this deep mill full. You got that right. That's a way to do it. Awesome. For sure. Keep it up. One of the important things about fishing offshore like this is using your GPS and we're following our same track and trail. I can zoom in a little bit here. And that's where all those milfoil beds are. So I kind of keep myself in that same area. I haven't set a waypoint, which I could, but uh, that's one of the key things on getting back on those fish. On this pitching bite, we've had two different 
patterns. One right in the middle of the milfoil, and then the other right out on the edges of it, yep. where it drops off to the deeper water. But they seem to all be feeding on the space monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that they are. I ain't kidding you, the first time I used one, I went out there and whacked them. I thought, man, I got a new favorite bait. And that was just in the little lake that I live on. There he is. Oh, that's a good fish right there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm having a ball. Good job, Kim. I'm having a ball. He kind of just swam out without, with it without me knowing about it. Absolutely. That's another nice one. Sure is. Whew. Good job. Thank you. Stay tuned. There's more monkey business coming right up. Boy, they're eating that space monkey up. Welcome back. Let's listen to Kim's guest, Steve Ragetail Parks, as he recaps today's pattern. Now, Kim, what you were doing a while ago when we were fishing the edge of that grass, that's that's exactly what we do in Texas. If we have a if we have a lake that has a lot of grass in it, what we'll do is find that edge where it drops off into the deeper water. And then what I do with my hummingbird, I just mark about 15 yards out from where that edge is, and I just I just mark those spots with waypoints. And I don't have to draw buoys, I don't have to do anything like that, and I just keep the boat on those waypoints and pitch right to the edge of that grass. You don't have to cast it, you can just pitch right to the edge of it because a lot of times, right where that grass ends and that deeper water starts, that point right there, right where they come together, that strike zone. You got it. And that details is out right there. You can just run with the boat, mark all those spots, come right back to it, line up on it, and get after them. The edge of the outer grass line did produce, but the key area within the thick milfoil we pitched was the actual hard lip of the bottom substrate where it dropped off. The Humminbird 2D sonar image on the left does a much better job of depicting the bottom content as compared to the down imaging. The red colored return portrays the hard bottom contour. We had few bites in the milfoil where the bottom was flat and featureless. The irregular element of a quick depth change or an isolated piece of hard structure like wood or stumps held the majority of the better fish within the milfoil. The literal spot on the spot. Another thing we discovered underwater was the heavy colonization of zebra mussels on the milfoil stalks. First developing at the base of the weeds, these colonies of very sharp zebra mussel shells were progressing up the entire stalks, basically forming an assemblage of crisscrossing saw blades, making it difficult to land fish without breaking off. It was apparent that a heavy abrasion resistant line was needed and 50 pound vicious braid performed the job flawlessly. I told you, if we didn't get one of you, ooh, that's a good one. Oh. <laughs> I'm a coming. <laughs> I'm a coming. <laughs> I thought it was even bigger than that. Nothing wrong with that one, though. <laughs> he just came to the surface I a little knew. bit too fast for me. When we saw that grass growing to the surface. Well, as soon as I said the hooks start coming to the surface, and then it just bulleted right out of the water. Beautiful little fish. There you go. I have another underwater encounter that Danny and I found intriguing on this lake that we'd like to share. And as fishermen, I think you'll find it noteworthy as well. While exploring the grass and bottom contour of this generally clear man-made reservoir, we came upon an unfamiliar sight we hadn't experienced before. There was an eerie cloud carpet covering the bottom. The previous week, this lake had been chemically treated for aquatic weed control, and perhaps the coontail in this immediate area was more heavily spot treated. This cloud was likely caused by the intense decomposition of the organic plant matter in this particular region of the lake. The significance of this phenomenon as fishermen is that if an excessive amount of aquatic plants die off, 
the decomposition creates a deoxygenated layer or dead zone at the bottom of the lake. In turn, you're just not going to catch any fish here. You can clearly see there are no fish present in this immediate area, not even a bluegill. Decomposition is an oxygen using process and the source of oxygen is that which is dissolved in water. Fish require sufficient dissolved oxygen, otherwise they will suffocate. If the entire lake had been treated to this extent, the result could have been devastating. Small partial treatments are an effective method to manage aquatic plants and reduce the risk of a fish kill due to oxygen depletion. As Kim and Danny continue to bathe within the aquatic compost pile, let's break for a commercial. Stay with us. Ew, yuck. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Evan Rood. And by Patty, the professional association of diving instructors. Patty is the way the world learns to dive. Listen to that. You know what that is? That's Evan Rood's signature sound. Our friend Eric Olson, Evan Rood's assistant product manager, shares the significance of sound development. One of the things that we strive to achieve is that sound, uh, because primarily when you start that engine up, you don't hear anything else but the engine. And one of the things that we work with is our department is called NVH, or Noise, Vibration, and Harshness. And what they've done is a, a great job at developing each engine's soundproofing characteristics that are based on each engine's needs. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Uh, first one is one of our newer introductions, it's the 15HO. And what you'll see is, Kim, is that we don't need a lot of material in here. It's, it's custom fit to the cowling, but we don't need a lot of material because the 15HO is generally a trolling type engine, but we still want to make sure we address how where that air comes in the engine, this is where air comes in, sound can travel back out. And what follows in all of our engines is we want to bend the sound wave. We want to change the tone in the sound wave and make it as quiet as we want. And as, like I said, signature sound is what we're looking for. Let's look at the big dog, the big 250HO. We still maintain that same concept of multi-density foam, but again, it's different, different material. And you'll also see it is custom made for that engine. No one else in the industry does that. You can see it, you can feel it, and you can hear it when you drive. Kim Stricker and his guest, Rage Tail designer Steve Parks, continue to trigger strikes while pitching space monkeys in the thick milfoil growing along the drop-off lip. Let's join them as they oh, land yet yeah. another quality large oh, That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> yes, sir. There you go, brother. <laughs> this. There ain't nothing funner than that, I'm telling you folks. <laughs> that is so much fun. Good yes, job, sir. buddy. Thank you. This space monkey, it's, it was actually designed as a flipping bait. And you can understand why when you see the action of all these appendages on the fall. Anytime you move this little bait, even the slightest amount or the slowest amount, these appendages are swimming through the water with the rage tail flange. That's what makes it happen. Get him, get him, get him. <laughs> That's another good one. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, your, your co angler was a little slow on that one. <laughs> nice fish. Oh, oh, a nice solid chunk. Settle down, darling. Good solid chunk. Boy, they're eating that space monkey up. Good job. That is definitely one tool. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you. We were rigging the space monkey with the new Strike King Tour Grade Tungsten Weight. And uh, this is a three quarter ounce. This is the one we were using. And if you'll notice, it's pegged to the bait. And that's real important when we're fishing the grass. In this case, I use weight stops. There's one above the bait there. 
that keeps it from sliding down. And all you do is just slide the weight stop down to the bait. That looks like a good That's fish. A good oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> nice one, bud. All right. Oh. Good job, Kim. Another good one. No kidding. Your thumb's starting to get worn out, buddy. <laughs> that is. <laughs> right on top of the nose. Beautiful fish. Gorgeous fish. Yeah. Ah. That one's getting raw. <laughs> Very nice. I'm glad you were able to come up here and do this with me. Man, I wouldn't miss it for anything. I appreciate the invite. It's a lot of fun for sure. A big Texas goes out to Steve Parks for his assistance in this week's production. On our next episode, it's all about Louie. Bassmaster Magazine senior writer and my good friend, Louie Stout, joins us in northern Michigan to help cope with the high winds prior and the bluebird skies following a passing cold front. A cold front which, as usual, follows Louie Stout like an abandoned puppy dog. It's a gift. We'll deal with that next week right here on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production. 